Kwekwe. My name is Judy. I'm an Algonquin grandmother from the Charbot Lake area. I'd like to tell you about our grandfather. Now, he wasn't my grandfather. He was the grandfather of the Algonquin nation, and his name was William Commanda. William Commanda was born in 1913 on Remembrance Day. Remembrance Day before there was a Remembrance Day. He was born in the time of frost under the, under the morning star. To the Anishinaabe people, grandfather is a term of respect. We would say grandfather, grandmother, aunt, and uncle um, as a, a form of respect to the people that we acknowledge that have a lot of uh, knowledge to share and wisdom, somebody that you'd want to learn from. And that person to us was William Commander. He was the great, great grandson of a hereditary chief who led the Algonquin people from the Lake of Two Mountains in Quebec to settle on traditional lands in the Kitchissippi, which is what we would call the Ottawa River. He was a guide, a trapper, a woodsman for most of his life. He was an internationally known birch bark canoe maker and has displays in many museums around the world. He built 75 birch bark canoes during his career. He was a pipe carrier and a respected spiritual leader and spokesman at many conferences all over the world. He had great care and concern for Mother Earth. He had a great respect for the Earth and believed that our spiritual, our survival, uh, depends on the way we take care of our Mother Earth and all of her resources. He was a member of the Squirrel Clan. He was constantly planting seeds so future generations would profit from his words. He married and raised a family at Kitiganzibi, at that's near Manawaki, Quebec. He was the keeper of three wampum belts since 1970, and he was the chief of the reserve there for 19 years. In 1961, he survived cancer and became even stronger. As a child, he would sit and listen to his elders talk for hours at a time and tell stories. And now people came from all over the world to listen to him. In 2000, he created the Circle of All Nations at his home in Kitiganzibi. Every summer, visitors would come from all over Canada and the United States, as well as South America, Switzerland, France, Germany, Mexico, and Japan. They would come to share the, in their own language, translated many times, how they were working in their own countries to protect and preserve Mother Earth, and ask for Grandfather William's advice. Each year, nearly 3,000 people camped out on his property at Kinnegan-Zibi, and he would jokingly tell everyone that he financed it all with his pension check. In 2008, Grandfather William traveled from the Ottawa area to the um, uranium protest near Charlotte Lake, where I'm from. It was uh, hugely inspiring at the age of 95 to walk beside him on Highway 38 and number seven. Grandfather to me was not just a, a historical figure or somebody that I read about in the newspaper, uh, but he was someone that I had met and spent time with. I've been to his home in Kitiganzibi. I've listened to the elders from different countries come and speak to him. In uh, 2008, we held a gathering in uh, Smith Falls. It was a, a small gathering of Algonquin people, and we had br drumming and dancing and fry bread, of course. We, uh, we cooked beaver and goose over an open flame in the traditional way. Uh, that was the year that my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, had her walking out ceremony. And it was quite a surprise to, to look out over the crowd and see Grandfather William's smiling face. And he was like that. He, was, he would hear that Algonquin people were gathering somewhere, and he'd just show up. 
and uh, just sit among the people and listen and talk and just have a good time like any grandfa grandfather would. There is a saying that not only the mountains live, oh, even the mountains, not even the mountains live forever. And uh, sadly, our grandfather William started his sky journey on August the 2nd, 2011. But his work didn't end. Thousands of people have heard his words in Algonquin, French, and English, translated into many languages. We remember his words and carry on his work because he told us we have to have one mind in four directions. Until we reach one mind, we cannot be filled with understanding. The Creator will not listen until we have one mind, just like we were one person. Thank you, Grandfather.